Wicked Tuna Real Talk. And we're on. You just watched the all-new episode of Wicked Tuna, and now it's time for Wicked Tuna Real Talk, the web show where Gloucester's top bluefin tuna captains will give us their take on what just happened. I'm Mike Salk. I am your host, and joining us this week, we got three captains with us. First, Captain Dave Marciano of the Hard Merchandise, Captain Paul Ebert of the Kelly Ann, and Captain Dave Carrero of Fishing Vessel Tuna.com. Guys, thank you for being with us today. On this last episode, we saw the fleet's underdog boats fighting hard to stay in the race. We saw a new boat, Drama, joining the competition. We'll get to that, and they got off to a bit of a, uh, bit of a rocky start. Over on .com, we saw first mate Sandro take over the reins when Dave was away. So there was a lot going on in this episode. We have a ton to talk about. I want to start with being an underdog. I mean, we've seen Dave kind of race off to the lead, and Pinwheel's kind of been right there with him. But there's an underdog mentality, and Dave, I know the hard merchandise always sort of has that feel, and I know your fans feel that way too, that you're sort of that lovable underdog that you can root for. <laughs> Would you be happier being the favorite? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, that must, it'd be nice to have it all be easy, right? But, I mean, again, life ain't like that, right? Life is real. You don't always get what you want. Sometimes you're just gonna get by when, you know, you get what you need, right? So, and uh, bottom line is you just got to keep riding. That's the only thing I know how to do. Is there a level of pride that comes with that? I mean, you got this boat. It sank a couple of years ago. You had to yeah. rebuild it. Yeah. You seem to sort of struggled along your way. How, how much pride does that, does that well, build? Well, yeah, in? there's a certain amount. I mean, sure. I wish I could say I had the biggest, baddest, fanciest boat in the fleet. There's a certain amount of pride that goes with that. And great for the guys who do that, like Dave. You know, he's got a gorgeous boat. At least, you know, for me, that gives me a goal in life, right? Hey, maybe someday if I work hard enough, maybe I will get that boat that'll be faster than the tuna.com. Well, <laughs> <laughs> granted, I don't know what to do if right, I was so ever going that speed. <laughs> but, you know, at least, you know what I mean? In, in the meantime, though, sometimes you got to take what you got and make it work Roll and just with keep it. grinding. Well, Paul, that's basically been your life. I mean, you've been on a lot of boats. We've talked about that. The underdog mentality has to be important to you. I've been an underdog my whole life. I was always a couple years behind, all my brothers fishing. They all had boats. I couldn't afford a boat. I was a little kid. So coming into this, it has given me a big step forward to go for something. It has given me a big, big time thing to foresee. I can get my own boat. I can achieve goals that I never thought I could. It's been a big deal for me. Your more immediate goal is just to kind of ratchet up the fish count, right? That's I mean, you're our, falling behind all a little of bit. Our, how All of our game is to put meat on the deck. How quick can it change? And right now you're right down near the bottom. How it quick can, can it change? It can change in one day. Yeah, real one quick. day, everything can turn. Change in an you, hour. In, yeah, exactly. Dave, last year you were just far and away beyond everybody else. And this year, you're a little bit more of a, of a dogfight for it. How motivating is that? It's, uh, it's very motivating. You know, I mean, last year, you know, we came out strong and we finished strong. It was a slow year of fishing. We were just able to capitalize on most of the bites. We lost very few fish, and as you saw, we caught quite a few. But you know, I know these guys are going to come out knowing what I just said, and they're going to come out running and gunning for me. So you know, we better be ready. All right, we got to get to my favorite moment. This is my favorite moment that we've had so far on Wicked Tuna, and I can't wait to talk about it. I hope you feel a little guilty. This is what I'm excited for, because now you've seen it. You've seen your epic rant. Well, yeah. I would say you've heard it, but you didn't get to hear most of it, because you know there's children out there yeah, and all right. that, and there's delicate ears. How does uh, You lost two in a row. The second one was basically right there at the yeah. boat when it got away. You're just about to take the shot. The thing takes off. What 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 broke you? Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the line. <laughs> well, it, you know, they, what the swivel jammed in the tip or whatever oh, it was. You know, look, it just goes as far. I I usually try and stay positive. Losing a few is part of the game, right? But now the reality of life catches up. You need a paycheck. Things go wrong, right? Everybody has their breaking point. You know, I'm not proud of that, right? It's not like, you know, I wanted to show my son, hey, this is a great way to behave, right? Just throw a <laughs> There's you a know, lot of stress. There's a lot of money on the know, end of the line. You start smashing stuff around, but you know what? Everybody has their breaking point, and apparently that day I reached mine. <laughs> Did you get the, uh, the shot of the two of them kind of scuttling away and trying to stay far away in the boat? Yeah, yeah. I bet, I bet at that point, 
They were wishing the boat was about 40 feet longer, right? Uh oh, <laughs> Dave's gone postal. But then Sound you end travels. up catching a really big fish at the end of this. So, I mean, when that happens, <laughs> does that sort of up the embarrassment level? It's like, oh my God, I can't, can't believe wait. I felt that way just a few minutes ago. Yeah, we well, all felt like you that. You know, sure, right? But then Jay, Jay has this thing, if you ask him, I bet he'll tell you. <laughs> Sometimes that's exactly what it takes for us to get things going. Mm -hmm. I need to have a complete meltdown and start smashing. <laughs> Around, and then all of a sudden the fish start coming. I like, the word, I like the use of the word tantrum. If you're willing to call yourself a tantrum, then I think right, that's right. the right word for it. Yeah, it was well, a how, tantrum. Do you, how do you deal it. with losing fish? I mean, it happens all the time. I've it's not it. new. But. I've been doing this for a long time. I've watched my father rant and rave over 25 cents a pound. It's just the feeling of struggling catching a fish. You're sitting there, you're fighting fish week after week, and you're losing them, you're losing them. You snap. Mm -hmm. It's just the overcoming catching one. I mean, it's all the bottom line is the money for us. Now there's a lot of money on the line, and it costs a lot of money to go fishing. It's just like I've seen Dave wake out before years <laughs> ago when I fished with him. Yeah, remember that when we lost that wow. one? And, I started, and, and then I what happened? We had a double header like, instantly. Relax. Really? It's going to be all right. We're going to get him, remember? And, and then boom, and Dave's boom. like, oh, I'm sick of losing him. We lost like 11 in a row, right? Oh, more than that. What does Dot Com look like when he freaks out? I mean, I guess we saw him freak it out at Tyler awesome. earlier this year. <laughs> he loves it, it was great because he felt great after that. He was like, he got it and we caught him. We <laughs> saw something to Kim, right? I mean, we saw you get mad at Tyler this year. I think yeah. that's the most we've seen you lose your cool at any point like on the show. Show, would you say that, and then after that, you start to catch a fish again, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, can that explosive release of energy be helpful for you out there in maybe, a boat? Maybe, maybe not. You know, whether that's why we're catching fish or not, I don't know. But, you know, like Dave said, everybody Focused. has their breaking point, you know. Yeah. Maybe that's what it takes. You reach your breaking point, you're maxed out now, you realize you've done bad, let's stay focused, let's you know, pay attention to the task at hand, and that's catching fish and making money. Well, well, Dave was freaking out. Paul, you just seem to be catching fish. You're in a groove at this point. You've caught three in three weeks. He said it was just sort of a little fish in this case. It wasn't a huge one. Maybe one inch. It was, it was a nice, it was a big money fish, too. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes big fish, okay. little fish, big payoff. Right. Yep. You know, I've groove? had 800 pounders that paid two bucks a pound. Ooh. You feel so, like right now this is sort of, you've hit your groove on a new boat, new crew, you guys sort of start to find yourselves a little bit? Everything's different with the guys on the boat because we're just starting to learn. They're opening up now. They weren't, you know, they were very conservative at the beginning, just waiting for me, trying to learn of what I'm going to do instead of just jumping in and saying, what about this, what about, you know. It's hard to get, like, Dave's had Sano for a long time. He's had Jay for a long time. You just use it. You get it. It's a team. You need a team to catch these fish. And you got to learn. You've you got, got to learn, learn what players. each other want or do and learn their likes and dislikes mm. and go with it. Are you sure they're being conservative or maybe there just wasn't enough room for them to talk? I mean, that's always a possibility. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot of Paul on that boat from what I've seen. <laughs> Well, I work a lot. <laughs> let, let you tie it. my hands down, I can't talk. <laughs> I need my hands. Well, you mentioned the communication, and when you watch the dot-com, that, that seems to be what jumps out to me, is how easily you and Sandro communicate they with communicate. each other. communicate. I want to get to him here together in a minute. for so long. Well, yeah. but you guys almost are drama-free out there. I mean, it just feels like you're, there's almost a mind meld between you where you barely need to say anything in order to do the right thing. And there's, there's a reason for that. You know, like I said, whenever I bring somebody new on the boat, I like to hire someone them. without any experience, just like he said. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that person to go from, from kindergarten all the way through the grades with me. I'm the teacher the whole time. This way, it's not like taking someone on like Paul, and no offense. But that knows Paul, things you know, different he, ways. Different way. yeah. And he wanted his way, I want it my way. Right. But overall, you know, I'm the captain. I have the final say That's in what right. happens or doesn't happen, although I respect his opinion. With Sandro now, we don't have to talk because I know what he's thinking and he knows what I'm thinking because that's the way I brought him up through the years of him fishing with me. Well, he's he molded him the way Dave wants him to be. Mm -hmm. And he taught him, like you with Jay. Yep. You mold him so we know what, the, what each other do at certain times. We know what to do, when to do, how to do it how to make Dave not that pissed <laughs> off, how, what to do when he freaks out, what to do when he's happy. Okay. You know what I mean? Doesn't it make everything easy? It's a Yeah, but not, not everybody but, you bring on your boat can excel like Jay did. Exactly. I've had a lot of mates come, work a few years, think they've got it all, 
they have all the pieces of the puzzle, then they move on, never right. to catch a fish They talk again. the talk, but you're they cannot walk the not. walk. Well, let's talk about the guy who is on your boat right now. Cassandra had a great week, right? Yep. He goes out there, takes a new guy, uh, and we'll talk more about Jordy here in just a moment, but he goes out there by himself without you. First of all, where were you? Just hanging out? I was at work. All right, Dave's at work, so he has, hey, guys, take the boat, go do a little fishing, and he comes back with a gigantic haul. Proud? Is that a proud moment for you? Well, first of all, for me, to let somebody take my boat means I have a lot of trust in that person. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot right there, whether they catch a fish or they don't. A lot of bad things happen out there. So I got to trust those guys taking my boat without sinking and coming back alive. That alone is, is, a, is, that's is huge. a task. That's, huge. that's huge. Did you make that offer or did he come to you with the ask? No, I made the offer. You know, sandra has been with me. He's never really fished much before. He's never been on a boat before. He's never seen a tuna before. But he just learned so fast. And I said, this he kid has it. what it takes. He gets it, mm, period. Does. And for me to let those two young boys go out, take the boat to the fishing grounds, wherever they chose to go, to accomplish the task, and that's catching a fish. Not only did they catch a fish, but they caught a big fish at that. I think it was just over 700 pounds of rest. And that's, that's amazing. Fish. And not only is it amazing, but that's just a great feeling for me. Yeah. I have no kids, but those, you know, Sandro is my kid, so to speak. <laughs> and just to watch, you know, something, someone that you've taught to, you know, excel to, to like excel that. and do that and is amazing. succeed. The kid, he's got would, it. Would you let your, uh, would you let Jay and Joe take the boat out without you? You, you know, I, I don't think they're quite ready for that. And a lot of it has to do with it. It's the boat too. The thing about my boat is because it's not newest and, and everything's not perfect, right? It has a lot of little things that like, you know, I'm ready for stuff to go wrong at any second. You guys, you know, you've seen it over the years, right? Total MacGyver. <laughs> I mean, we had a problem like, on our boat. There, the there's a lot of room. bubble gum and electricity tape that keeps the hard merchandise running. How many of those problems are self-created from you tearing stuff off the windows like we saw in this past episode? <laughs> or drop it. <laughs> some of them are aged, some of them are just what Dave so, has done to the boat himself, you know, like I Godzilla. I this philosophy. If, if, if it jams, force it. If it breaks, it need to replace it anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, you also decided in this, uh, after that moment with Sandra going out with Jordy, that you're gonna take on a third member of your crew. Yep. Why, why Jordy? What, what impressed you? What made you make that decision? I mean, I, I, I talked to Sandra about it, and he said he did real well out there. You know, Jordy is just a, he's a young kid, and he's just appeared to be very motivated, and I take Sandra's word for many things and he said he likes he likes Jordy and he wants to bring him on. Yeah, you guys have talked about him before. I remember last year, uh, He's both throughout the year, hearing you guys talk about how much Sandro added to Dave's boat. Not that you were taking credit away from Dave, but just how much of it you guys seem to be to really willing to give guy, to Sandro. To have a crew member, you guys will both vouch for this, to have someone that you can like take a day off and they can go out and catch fish, yep. they bring a lot to the plate. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. If, it, if this fishery was easy, everyone would do it for a living. Not everyone does it for a living. It's very struggling. I mean, we have, Dave and I have a really hard time, but you know, he's got it going on. He has got the team that is, it's, a golden team. Well, that's probably golden. The, per the perfect segue into what we saw with the guys from the drama who want to try to make it in this fishery. They want to try to be a part of the fleet and, and be right there. What do you make of their uh, opening salvo into that? Because it, it didn't it didn't start off didn't perfectly for them. Right. No, it didn't. And, and you know what? That I think to a certain extent, I think we all went through it, right? All of us. I mean, not, not several any, times. Not any one of us here was, you know, born with the knowledge, right? right? All of this racket, at least for myself, was going out there, putting my time in, making mistakes, and learning from them and moving forward, right? You well, gotta learn just, from it them. It was just a year ago we saw Paul drive his boat up onto the ground. So, I mean, it, this is oh, not yeah, that far in the past. Yeah, we discovered Plymouth Rock. That was <laughs> yeah. impressive. I got a like cocktail. A cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cocktail for but, now. But I like what you said, Paul. The first thing you said to them uh, was that you were impressed with the hard work. Oh, how, how, how far can that go in making it in this business? That is everything. I always said if I could get a deckhand or somebody to work with me, not for me, Someone like myself with like the drive that Sandro has. You gotta you? get someone oh. with that experience. Like, but, yeah. You got, I mean, that's that's the way to do it. You know, just take someone off the street that's very little experience fishing, they and then everything the that you're teaching them is they're absorbing. There's no yeah. other way, just your way. What would they you say to, to those drive. guys, Dave? You know, what what what's the best advice you would give to the guys on the drama? Wow, I don't. I mean, <laughs> don't give start, up. Start over, do over. Yep. 
It's and tough he, on that small boat. I know. I fish small boats my whole life. Yeah. And they're just learning. Like they look. When I first came to Gloucester, I had to get familiar. I didn't know Dave that well. They don't. They didn't just jump into it. You got to pay your dues. We've all paid dues. It's like cost us time. hundreds of thousands of Some dollars. Some guys are going to do better than others sooner. You know, just to, for someone to get a boat and think it's easy to go out and catch a bluefin tuna, they're going to be in for a rude awakening. It's not as easy as just going out, anchoring up, chumming, putting bait on a hook, watching the balloon go down, real it's, harpoon it's and not as off. easy as as seen on TV. Yeah, as yeah. As How many <laughs> times have you said, what are we doing this for still? Well, I know what I and learned. And then you hook up. I learned this week that if I want to go out and catch bluefin tuna, i got to keep my anchor off of other people's boats, <laughs> and when things are going awry, start screaming, cursing, get the bleep button going, <laughs> and the fish just jump onto the boat. Okay. So I've learned something. Thank you for teaching me. All right, guys, good stuff as always. It's all the time we have for this installment of Wicked Tuna. Real talk, a hearty thank you to Captain Dave Marciano, who I don't think got bleeped during this show, of the hard merchandise, Captain Paul Ebert of the Kellyanne, and Captain Dave Carrero of Fishing Vessel, Tuna.com. Thanks, guys, I appreciate it. You can go to natgeotv.com slash Real Talk to watch all the Real Talk episodes. Channel the bite down. will be on up north in Maine waters. And when the fleet descends on the crowded hotspot, you're going to see some fireworks. We'll have .com Dave back here again to talk about that, as well as Captain Tyler McLaughlin of the Pinwheel and Captain TJ Odd of the Hot Tuna. To get daily updates on everything Wicked Tuna, like us on Facebook or simply follow us on Twitter. We'll see you next time on Wicked Tuna Real Talk.